Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this semi-abstract um, autumn silver birches landscape um, using a few colours. Um, I'm going to be using Oriolin, Quinacridone Gold, French Vermilion, Carmine, uh, Burnt Umber and Payne's Grey. I want to paint this from my imagination um, and make it nice sort of a spontaneous loose and free and semi-abstract but to sort of warm myself up visually um, I took a look at lots of beautiful reference photographs on Pixabay of lovely autumnal scenes and silver birches and things like that and with those images fresh in my mind um, I'm now going to sketch out um, just some very sort of abstract and stylized tree shapes onto my paper. I'm using Milford 100% cotton paper. Um, it's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of 45 degrees so the paint will run, although I can lay my board flat if I need to. Um, the paper is cold pressed, as I said 100% cotton and Milford paper is a lovely paper to paint on. Um, I really enjoy the surface of it, it's got a nice texture. It's 11 inches by 15 inches, or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. I'm using um, a carpenter's pencil here. It's got a nice thick dark lead, so I can sketch out quite loosely uh, without getting bogged down with too much detail with a fine point. You can see I'm just trying to bring across these sort of branch shapes um, upright sort of vertical ones over towards the left side of the paper but also with some branches leaning up towards the top right corner. I'm trying to vary my angles so it doesn't look too sort of repetitive or contrived. Keeping my um, tree trunks nice and slender in this case because birch trees are quite slender and I want to uh, mask them out. And this is my Pebio uh, masking fluid or, or drawing gum and it's sort of a, a, a liquid latex and um, you can paint it over areas that you want to preserve um, the white of the paper. So I've dipped a small paintbrush um, into water and then rubbed some soap into the bristles before using my masking fluid. Um, this is important to do this because the masking fluid will set hard in the brush or rubbery and will ruin your brush. So make sure your brush is an old one and that it's really well soaped before you dip it into the masking fluid. And you can see all I'm doing is going over my tree lines and my branches with a fine brush. I won't show all of this because it can take quite a while but this masking fluid is pale blue so it shows up nicely and all these little areas will be white when I remove the masking fluid which means that I don't have to worry about them. I can paint very freely um, and abstractly um, when I come to do my background but now I have to leave all that masking fluid to dry completely. So the masking fluid is all dry, so using my water misting spray, I'm going to spray my paper sort of over most of it, but, but not leaving some dry patches. Uh, rather than brushing on the water, the spray help, hopefully will give me some sort of nice effects. And now I'm brushing on colour. This is Oriolin. It's really nice and bright. Just thought I'd use some autumnal colours today. And then the next colour is French Vermilion. These are Jackson's um, artist quality paints. Uh, lovely, richly pigmented colours. And then I'm going to put on some carmine, which is sort of a pinker colour. The idea is hopefully to get these colours to begin to run. I think you can see where the paper is wettest. The paint's already beginning to run, but I can spray the paint in places. And because my board's at an angle of 45 degrees, then it'll begin to run down the page 
um, and encourage a little bit more of this sort of diffusion and to get the colours to sort of marry and mingle on the page. Ideally, I'm just looking for quite a sort of random uh, backdrop that evokes abstractly um, autumn colours and the movement of the wind through the trees. So I'm dabbing through with a wet brush, sort of diluting the paint here and there. Now this is um, quinacridone gold. It's a little bit deeper and richer, sort of a more of a sort of an a sort of egg yolk yellow. Um, the first colour, Oriolin, was more of a sort of lemon yellow, but we can see that we're getting some lovely sort of orangey shades as well, as well as the yellows, the reds and the deep pink, um, as all these colours mix. You can see as well that the where the masking fluid is, it's resisting um, the colour. Now I'm mopping up around my tape to make sure that when I lay my board flat, I don't get any spills, and just dabbing out with a tissue to sort of lighten up and make it look a little bit more patchy and a bit more diffused. Now I've laid my board flat and this is burnt umber because I want to get some shadows around the base of the trees and just a few darker brown areas to sort of, um, to work tonally against those brighter hues. Everything will just soften and dry back a lot lighter. And I'm going to be putting a little bit of salt um, into the wet paint across the whole page. And hopefully sprinkling a bit of salt here and there uh, will just um, lighten up and diffuse the whole area. Now I'm creating some texture across that rich paint across the bottom. This is the corner of a plastic store card and I'm just scratching and etching through the paint to create just these sort of random suggestions of grasses and brambles and undergrowth below the trees. This is water just flicked onto the page with my fingers and that creates these little run backs in the paint. dabbing off where there's a bit too much water and then I've got to wait for a little while before I can put the salt on so while I'm waiting why not spatter in some red hope you can see I'm just having so much fun and building up these beautiful abstract patterns now sprinkling some salt here and there across it I'm hoping that the salt would just have the effect of pushing away some of the paint and lighting up, giving me sort of gentle, sort of delicate texture. So now I need to leave it all just to dry completely and then come back and see how it looks. So here's the dry painting. I've stood it back up at 45 degrees again and it's a little bit brighter than I'm used to painting, but I had so much fun and I think it's going to work for what I, how I want the painting to look. I'm using a dry brush to brush off any salt that's remaining um, and then using a clean finger and just rubbing away and pulling away the latex masking fluid to reveal the plain white paper underneath. This masking fluid is quite interesting because you can pull it and it actually comes off in sort of strings um, in some places. If you're not using cotton paper, it's worth testing your paper first to make sure that it can handle masking fluid. Some of the cheaper pulp papers will tear when you try and remove the masking fluid. So check that first. I've got quite a lot here, so it's taking me a little while to remove it, but I hope you can see my sort of abstract tree and branch shapes um, revealed now and then brush off any crumbs of latex from the painting before you start to work on it. And if you like this sort of effect, then you could stop at this point, because uh, I think it looks really interesting. But if you um, want to turn your sort of abstract tree trunks and branches into something that resembles silver birches a little bit more, then take a small brush. I'm using a small calligraphy brush, but any brush with a small point will do because these branches are quite fine. And I've got two colours. I've got Cotman Payne's Grey and Cotman Burnt Umber. 
and I'm just going to run the paint through the, the masked areas, but I'm going to make sure that I vary up the tones. Um, I'm going to put darker patches here and there, and I want to leave some really nice light areas, and then put some sort of, some little vertical, no, horizontal lines and dots and spots and things um, here and there to imitate or suggest uh, the distinctive birch bark. If the paint goes on quite thick, then you can dab it off in places and that um, gives, will give you more of the sort of dappled light over the tree trunk. And if you, like me, have branches that overlap or are in front of other branches, then take care when you paint that. Um, I almost missed that large branch there and had to dab a bit of paint out. But now I've sort of securely uh, made it look like it's in front of the thinner branch, uh, trunk behind uh, by leaving that white. And I shall paint that over later on. So it's sort of dots and lines, keeping the sort of darker edge, the left edge of each tree trunk. And the, um, the right edge, keeping that a little bit lighter. That's a little bit tricky with such sort of thin trunks. But the most important thing is the sort of striping and the speckling and the white patches against the, um, the black and the sort of brown areas. Um, that will suggest silver birches. So I'm not going to film the whole of this process because it's fairly time consuming, but all the main trunks are painted in exactly the same way. And then taking just the sort of dark, sort of uh, dark grey, um, for the finer branches, and as you can see here, just pulling through in a sort of single sweep for the finer branches. And that makes them contrast nicely against the trunks. So as I say, all of the branches are done in that same sort of way, and the trunks, either the kind of the hit and miss, the dotting and the dashing technique and shading, or just keeping a very nice fine line and pulling through the branches. But I'm also trying to make sure that I keep some of those um, white patches on the branches throughout the whole picture showing, because I think they add to the texture, they add to the shape and the form, the lightness and the intricacy of this semi-abstract design. So my branches are mostly done, so I'm going to take a small synthetic Pro Art sword liner and that lovely rich dark Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber mixture and pull it across over my tree trunk so I can bed them down into the ground to create sort of like ferns and brambles and grasses and sticks and twigs. And then using the supple, um, flexible, long hairs of the sword liner to quickly whip in a few um, sort of spontaneous fine lines and branches just to sort of link the whole thing together. So I'm going to call that done and remove the tape, but I hope you can see how doing a lot less work on the right area has kept it a lot lighter and brighter, even though it's quite empty. It's still um, quite an interesting sort of abstract space. And here's the painting um, with its clean white border against um, a clean board. And I'm very pleased with it. It's a really interesting technique using the masking fluid and then creating this kind of random abstract background, but with all the appropriate colours for autumn. And if we look closely, you can see that it's just a hodgepodge of interesting marks that I've been making. If we were to analyse it, I haven't really painted trees. All I've done is I've made a lot of marks um, and textures and sort of lines and used sort of tone to suggest what I want here. And that I think is part of the 
enjoyment of creating these sort of semi-abstract or abstract pieces uh, that you can just kind of let go. And here I'm trying to get the movement and the sense of autumn rather than trying to explicitly paint detail. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me know what you think in the comments and I hope you'll give something like this a go because it's so much fun. Uh, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.